Dark Satellite Media. You're listening to the Everyone But Us podcast, straight from the heart of London. Yo, what's up everyone and welcome to the Everyone But Us end of year Christmas special. My name's Waymer. Uh, I'm accompanied by my two good friends, Lewis, a.k.a. Axel Foley. <laughs> How you doing, Lewis? I'm very good, mate. I'm just, um, just swinging off the back of fucking open lorries and shit, trying to take down fucking crime syndicates, putting fucking banana peel bananas in fucking <laughs> exhaust pipes, just doing an Axel Foley shit in Leytonstone. You get, you know how we do. A real yeah, life I'm, hero. I'm good, man. I'm all right. How are you? All right? Yeah, not too bad. Thank you. Not too bad. Excellent. And I'll, I'll bring in our next host, Steve, a.k.a. Buck Rogers. How you doing, Steve? <laughs> Buck Rogers. Buck Rogers, In yo. the 21st century. I'm into it. <laughs> I like it. It's, it's, it's another one that is better than Danny DeVito, and for that, I'll thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Entering into Tier 4, so Christmas is cancelled. <laughs> So um, every year we do like an end of year podcast and we just break down the events that happened throughout the year. And, you know, we just have a bit of a chinwag. So um, where would you gentlemen like to start? I think last year we spoke about the UK elections, Brexit we were talking about. Let's start from the beginning of January. Let's get straight to it. COVID. It fucked up 2020. I think in December, was it? Uh, we first heard about um, the, the coronavirus in uh, and am I right in saying? Yeah, you're I mean, right in saying that. Yeah, that's, yeah. If, if we, if we was, they was first alerted to it by the Chinese authorities that there was a mysterious illness making people um, like a flu type Ill, illness making people feel ill, but they couldn't work out what it was. And then obviously they had it put down to that Wuhan wet market place, whatever it was called or whatever it was. And then um, from there, um, as we mentioned in the last podcast, Last year, we was um, our attention was with the Australian bushfires that was going on at the time, and I was obviously pretty serious. So no one really sort of like was bothered about the coronavirus thing because it's like ah, it's that it's that side of the world in it. They, they always get it sorted out. They just chuck masks on and then it just disappears suddenly. But um, this time last year, the fucking world was burning, wasn't it, man? Exactly, you had, man. You had all the Californian fires as well. This, the this Brazilian it, fires. There was there was other shit going in the world. We just we just it was on the radar, but it just wasn't in anyone's attention. But no one paid attention to it. It was just like, oh, so there's a virus going on in China. Who the fuck cares? You know what I mean? Just want to let's be real. Like, yeah. Then all of a sudden, February comes, and this shit is over here in Europe. And we all remember seeing videos of fucking. I think Italy is the first place that got hit here really hard. As soon as I saw Italy, I was like, that's gonna be us in a few weeks. Because you know, as soon as it gets out of the country, it's going everywhere. Like, as soon as it hits the airports, it's fucking, you're done, mate. So, yeah. So, Boris Johnson uh, had a press conference basically saying that we had to go into a lockdown. I never thought I'd be saying this, but the one thing that, you know, is a vocal part of all our lives, hardcore scene, and that was shut down. Shut, shut down. <laughs> Dead. Boom. How was that initial period like for you? Um, personally, I needed a break because, like, been doing done a lot throughout the last couple of years of playing shows, helping put on that's, shows. No, that's interesting. Yo, that's interesting. You and very uh, honest opinion because for me as well, I was kind of like when we first had the lockdown, I was kind of embracing it. I felt like it was you, you, you had a chance to just kind of sit down, relax, and just like not yeah. be thinking about music or exactly. Yeah, I must admit, I kind of feel you in what you're saying there, man. When was the last show? In London. The last big show that was in London was the Enemy Mind show that Ready I, that we, me, Rich, Ferg and um, John put on. The last show that I went to before lockdown, um, Will's band, Who Cares? They had like a comeback show. They played in um, Dalston. And that was the last proper show that I actually went to, man. Steve, what was it like for you not being no music, not be being able to play? I mean, I've missed it, obviously, like massively not doing music, like... It's, that's what I do, man. Like, that's my whole thing. Like, same for all of us, really. But at the same time, I was still going to work. Not a lot changed, really, in that sense. The one thing that I did kind of get out of it and, and trying to look at it in a positive light, I had nothing to do with my money anymore. So it enabled me to sort myself out. I'm looking on the positive side of things. 
it's it's made me behave like a proper adult um, in terms of my finances and it's taught me some good lessons. But yeah, I can't. I'm bored of it now, though. I'm bored to fuck of it now. I just yeah, want to fucking get back to playing gigs and doing this sort of shit that I love. I was mad jealous, man. When people were at home and like getting paid and like just chilling at home, just playing PlayStation and you know listening to music. And I was out still working. I was like, fuck, man. But to me, I was just grateful to be working because I was like, shit, these people are going to go on furlough, furlough, but there's the uncertainty of, are they actually going to get a job at the end of it? Like, or they yep. just... And that's right. No, that's, I was going to say that, Steve. At first, that was my, my thought process was like, fuck's sake, man. People are getting paid to sit at home. But then when I started to see people lose their jobs, then I was like, thank fuck that I'm still working. Do you know what I mean? But the cra- I remember the craziest thing was just being in Leicester Square at midday and it, it, you could hear a pin drop, mate. That, that were all, I remember taking a picture of that and that will always stick in my mind, like, because it was just it's something that you never thought you'd see. Do you know what I mean? At that You're time right. in the day for it to be, I mean, nobody about. You could just stand in the road and you'd be for five minutes before a car passed you, man. It was nuts, man. Yeah, mate. I don't I don't know how reputable the source is, but I read that um there's a rumour flying around amongst the elite that Boris Johnson's gonna resign in January. Never. Never. I Never. don't know. In a million I've years. gotta be honest, right? He's got no one he's got no one writing the fucking script for him anymore. I can't see why nah, Johnson, no way, like, no Boris way. Johnson has always wanted to be Prime Minister why would he just resign like that yeah. I think well maybe he realises he don't know what the fuck he's doing maybe he realises he's, he's his not, I think like it's been obvious that he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing from his campaign yeah we all should have known what this government was all about from early in the year that we didn't talk about when there was those floods and there was all all them ex red wall towns and places in the country that were getting beaten by floods Boris Johnson and the Tories, they, they weren't saying fuck all. There was no help. They weren't saying shit. Like, you're on your you own. Nowhere to be seen, was he? You're, you're on your own, mate. I, mean, I, I can imagine Theresa May just lying back in her chair, just laughing, like watching this and just laughing, like. Mate, you know what? She was fucking shit. She was shit. Like and in- shit. And that cunt before her, David Cameron, he was a cunt and all. Because I'll tell you what, you go back five years from now, five years like in the past, yeah, and you are someone. Do you want to stay in the European Union? No one give a shit. They, they would go, I don't know. It's true. They have no clue what That'd it is. Be, it's it's like they just thing. shrug their shoulders and go, it's I don't true. know. Well, it's, it's fine, isn't it? You're right. David Cameron, he didn't have to do that fucking vote, man. He didn't have to do it. No. He gambled his career on it. and it fucking he, he, he thought his legacy up. would be that he was the guy to ask the country what they wanted and he delivered it. Yeah. Right? And, that, and it was very telling that he fucked up and as soon as the result fucked came in. Up. Because they got, because first of all, it was the Scottish vote where they said, oh, if you stick with us, we'll be in it together. And then once they voted um, yes to, to stay, all of a sudden, there was a fucking referendum for the EU. Quickly on the EU and Brexit, seeing we're here, like, what does that mean for bands then and music? UK-wise, you for us, not looking good, mate. Ah. It's not looking good. We're, we're going to be paying for fucking visas to go and play in Europe. Carnets and yeah. shit like that and checking each individual item of merch in our bags and the days of us just jumping in the van and just booking shit and making sure it's, it's going to be... It's, it's over, over for us, man. Unless you're, unless you're a big band where you know it's like, yo, we're going to sell this fucking venue out. We can pay for all the shit. We, we, we'll deal with the fucking... With the with the checks and whatever it's whatever it's, we do this professionally, cool. But if you're us who go to work, it's not worth it. It's like what you're going to be earning fucking hundred quid or something stupid. I'm not saying we're going out there to fucking earn mega mega money, but if you're going out there to lose money, what is the fucking point? Especially if your merch is all going to get checked at the fucking the ferry port and whatnot. The, the other thing as well, man, that UK that UK registration plate on your car. Is going to be hot, light up. hot, mate. Everyone but us, straight from the heart of London. So, what else that been in the fucking year? I was going to say, yeah. So, um, let's try and get onto a lighter note, I guess. Um, so during the, the the lockdown, one of the things that I was doing a lot was getting back into my uh, films, especially into my eighties and nineties classics. Two of my favourite actors. From that period was Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone. Who do you think had the best filmography out of the two? It's got to be Arnie, man. It's got to be Arnie to me. 
think Arnold Schwarzenegger wins. You're not yeah. to say that Sylvester Stallone any shit films. Sylvester Stallone had Rocky and Rambo, but Schwarzenegger had he had the Terminator, he had Predator, Running Man, Running Man, um, Total, Total Recall, Recall, Free Boobs. He he had yeah for, for real. He had well, he, <laughs> uh, yeah. Who can who can forget that? First of all, Stallone, out of Rocky and Rambo, you're going to probably say Rocky. Certain people will say Rocky, certain men will say Rambo. But I think for Arnold Schwarzenegger, you're going to go, what's, his, what's, he, what's Arnie known for? You're going to automatically say Terminator. It's a bit bigger, man. Arnie's just like, just his stage presence, his, his screen presence as well, man. I've got a few written down here then. So, um, Commando versus Cobra. Commando. Steve, what do you, what do you say? Commando, man. Every day. All day. All right. Twins versus Tango and Cash. Tango and Cash. <laughs> That's one one. <laughs> I'll show what it was probably in the fucking nineties. The last time I watched either of them movies, so I fucking I don't know, man. The reason I'm yeah. saying that is because these films both they came out the same year uh, within the same year. Tango and Cash so, all day. Uh, Cliffhanger versus True Lies. True Lies. I don't know if I've ever seen True Lies. Have you ever seen True Lies? I don't think so. True Lies is jokes, man. Uh, yeah. It's an amazing film, man. I love that film, especially. Um, what was her name? Um, I can't forget her name. Oh my god! I remember when you was young and like your uncle or your dad or whatever, they just be sitting there going, "Oh, what was that called? What was that called?" And you be going, "Oh, fucking hurry up, you old cunt!" That's off now, isn't it? Do that now. <laughs> <laughs> What's that one you got? Franchise Terminator versus Rambo. Terminator for me. Let's digest Terminator. Terminator, yeah, that only had two good films. It's true. They only had two good films. Whereas Rambo, Rambo had three good films. Rambo, the first Rambo, Rambo 2, and the Rambo comeback one that he, uh, Rambo 4, I think it was. Do you know what? Let me walk that back. I would say Terminator versus Rocky. Because they're both franchises, isn't they? As a, as a franchise, Rocky wins, man. Sorry, actually, I thought you said like just the two films, like Rocky 1 versus Terminator. That franchise. But I, I think I should have said Rocky instead of Rambo, to be honest, because I think Rocky is, is is a bigger franchise than Rambo. I think Rocky's a better franchise than Terminator. I think so as well. What was your favourite Rocky film out of all of them? Four. Oh, I've only seen one. I've seen one. Are you serious? Uh, yeah, I've only ever seen one Rocky film, Rocky Four. Oh my God, man. Every time I put one on, I just get bored, man. I, I, I hate being that yeah. guy. I just get bored, man. I'm like, oh, this is kind of boring, man. It's, I hate, um, probably, people are probably screaming down there, fuck it. What the fuck's <laughs> about this guy? <laughs> I like Terminator 1 because it's dark and gritty and it's like, just really, it's just a raw film, you know what I mean? But Terminator 2 is just like glitz and booms and guns and roses and public enemy t-shirts and I still love that shit. Man. No, I think Terminator I 2 was the best, was, was amazing, man. Do you reckon? I think I, it's I like better Terminator than one. I like Terminator 2. I, I personally... I do prefer Terminator One, even though some of the some of the effects in that are really, really dated. But <laughs> Terminator One's just a a, a a slasher movie, just with a dude who's just like just hell bent on fucking get, like the police scene, the police um, station scene where he just goes in and just fuck shit up, fuck just shit up, brutal man, it's brutal. Terminator Two, I love Terminator Two because I remember it coming out as well. I was just old enough to like be aware of it and I was banging at Guns N' Roses at the time and I was its audience even though I was like 11. I think that the only thing I struggle with watching Skyfire films from that period is just the effects. There's one bit where the Terminator is running after me it looks proper like stop motion like Jason the Argonaut <laughs> style proper old shit. Same in like. Robocop as well isn't it man? When you see the scenes with the Ed Oh that's annoying. terrible man. It's terrible. <laughs> when it's on its back and that it's bad. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is bad, but I oh, fuck it, man. That's such a good film. What's the scene where with the Robocop that can fly, and you can that's, just, that's Robocop three. three. You can see the cable, man. Like you can yeah. see the cable. <laughs> it's so budget, isn't it? <laughs> it's so budget, man. It turned a bit like Marvel or something, isn't it? At that it time, because really geez, shit. Robocop, the original film was dark. It was an 18. It was fucking dark as fuck, yeah. man. It was like a dystopian future and all that. But then, like, kids still loved it. It was fucked up, man. I don't think you'd, you'd have got that in any other decade than the 80s that, like... Because when I was a kid, I watched 18s all the time, man. We had a video van that come around the estate. Video van? Fuck yeah, me, man. man. Do you remember that? Um, you could, the, these kids don't understand, man. He would Just talk about the video van. Anything, bruv. The first time I saw... See, remember that film Shocker, the Wes Craven film? And uh, the geezer that 
dies in the electric chair but comes back as electricity and he lives in their TV and he haunts them and shit. Like, it's a fucking mental film, but I wanted to watch it so bad because it had uh, Megadeth and things like that on the soundtrack. I mean, remember Megadeth doing No More Mr. Nice Guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I fucking, I heard it. I was just like, I've got to see that movie. And that was an 18, so I got that off the video van. The only thing he wouldn't let us rent was porn. He had it underneath the... Because <laughs> you, know, you know in the back of the van, yeah, you've, you've got the little bit of carpet you lift up and the spare wheels yeah, in there? Yeah, yeah. The, the, that was his porn section. It's oh, spare wheel man, like it that. Was and he was like, you're not having that. But anything <laughs> else you can have. <laughs> Do you know what I used to love, love doing that I missed is on a Friday or Saturday night, going down to Blockbusters and just looking for a couple of DVDs, getting your popcorn and just going home and just watching that. Yeah. Your Titan Street Soldier team up with Russian Records to present Turn Dangerous, a new six-track EP coming soon. Pull out your knife and get out your gun and tell you this now, you know, two, two, Featuring six brand new tracks, Turn Dangerous will also include the nine tracks from their previous three EPs. And with a new merch drop coming soon, look out for Street Soldier with Turn Dangerous on Russian Records. So, obviously, we've been talking about a little bit about what's happened this year in relation to, like, obviously, COVID and some other bits and pieces. And obviously, it's kind of negative, you know what I mean? Not, don't want to say all the way negative, but it's not been the best year for everyone, has it? Like, obviously, there's been lockdowns, there's been curbs and our restrictions of what we could do. And then on top of that, we've had other stuff going in the world, which has been a bit nuts. So remember there was the George Floyd protests and then there was all talk about statues getting knocked down. And then we've got the American elections. We've got Brexit. We've just got loads of stuff, which is just really sort of like, we just thought, you know what, let's just find something that's happened throughout the year that has been sort of like a little bit strange but not too serious and obviously also a little bit funny as well. So we've decided to talk about the best wanks we've had this year. <laughs> Speak for yourself, mate. So basically, I've done a little bit of research. Anyone obviously listening will probably know, obviously, we went into lockdown in March. Most of our countries around the world went into like full lockdown in March and that. But there was a particular town in Thailand called um, Lopburi. They went into lockdown and there was monkeys that took over their town pretty much. Uh, and, like, <laughs> went on the rampage and were um, just basically causing all sorts of trouble for locals and that because obviously where people are inside they're not really there's not, not much tourism and that so these monkeys have just come out of nowhere and they just like breathing and stuff and just acting acting up really just going wild do you guys remember this story at all? nah nah uh, but monkeys are fucking savages man you ever been up Gibraltar up the mountain in Gibraltar? Never been to Gibraltar before, no. There's there's this like mountain in Gibraltar and when you get up to near the top, you can go on tours up there, do you know what I mean? They'll drive you up there. There's loads of monkeys that live up there. Every now and again, they'll just come along and rip your fucking ice cream out of your hand and just fuck off with it. And <laughs> they're like right little savage cunts, man. They're well funny. Do you remember when Michael Jackson had bubbles and apparently he had to get rid of him? Because he was getting a bit too wild. Yeah, of course. Like I wouldn't be surprised if rip from rip from captivity or whether he got it from a zoo, I don't know where Michael Jackson got bubbles. But it was from. a few celebrities. It was like it was a thing back in the day. Like the millionaires or billionaires were having like uh, monkeys or and tigers and and whatnot as pets. They get to their little monkey teenage years and they start acting up, same as teenagers, man. Like that's what my dog's going through at the moment as well. Like you could technically say she's in her teenage years, so she's getting a bit sassy, you know. But when when she's going for walks and you tell her to sit down and she just ain't listening to you, like she's looking at other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Same time in lockdown, I'm not sure what month it was. I think it might have been April, May. There was a certain program that came on um, Netflix. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Tiger King. Tiger King. Correct. It was fucking ridiculous from start too to rid- finish. Too ridiculous. Well. Um, the one bit that never like <laughs> that never left me about that program, and I don't know if you've seen the meme with it, right? And the meme is the guy's face when he watches the other geezer shooting his own brains out by accident. The, the CCTV footage of the guy's face going, <gasps> like, with the shot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, and, the, and the meme is like, my face when my co-worker pulls a mind-blowing trick. That's fucking wild. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> oh, that's wild, man. Yeah. Savage fucking meme. Tiger King was, um, it got a lot of people watching, man. I remember like seeing the um, the advert for it and thinking, what the fuck is this? This looks a bit weird, man. But yeah. Ended up watching it and just thinking, damn, this program is absolutely fucking nuts. The amount of uh, animal, uh, cat, big cat sanctuaries there are in America, like this, this 
hundreds like there's so many man there's loads of them for me one of the strangest people was that dude i think his name was doc he owned the other animal sanctuary and he used to have oh, like, he was a prick man he used to have yeah. loads of wives and that like he had like loads yeah, of women yeah, yeah. and shit good like, life though for real <laughs> <laughs> he was just like one of them old weird sex guys, wasn't he? Dude, like, he, he was, he was definitely, yeah, that one of them old weird sex dudes, like who just has <laughs> loads of women, loads of wives. Basically, he's like an African chief, like, he's got loads of wives, he don't give a fuck. Apparently, he's got no money either. All his money is like done through scamming or something. Yeah, it's all, but he still yeah. seems to be living good, so I don't know. He, D- uh, one, of the G- one of the G- one of the G's in that was that dude was like a the guy who got done for I think he got done for drugs and shit. He was he was into animals pretty deep as well. He was like a gangster sort of type thing. He wasn't he wasn't a gangster, but he was a gangster. But he was like, do you remember yeah. the dude I'm talking about? He just works at the park, wasn't it? Is that the one you're talking about? The geezer that um he got I think he got done for murder years before or something like that. Yes, that dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, he was like a bit of a scary cunt to be honest, wasn't he? Yeah. Like, but a lot of them were all battle scars. There was a lot of them. There was the one girl that had her arm um, chewed off. That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Literally, yeah. Like, like a couple of weeks later, late, late, later, she just the, 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 went um, back the to Latino work. The Latino looking <laughs> chick. Oh, yeah, think, yeah. I'm she not was sure nuts. Who, oh man, I'm not sure who it was. I think it was a uh, Richie Crutch or Chris Mahmood. They made a. They said a comment on her on Facebook because they were talking about that particular chick. They said, "Oh yeah, she's a badass, but she needs to put some lotion on her nub." Damn. <laughs> 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 she come back and like straight after she just come back and she's, she's like yeah I'm work. going back to work yeah. but going back to the, the, the dude that shot himself apparently that was by accident he didn't mean to do it yeah because oh, yeah, at the time yeah a lot of people thought he um, committed suicide but he never the funeral was like so hard to, like the uh, ceremony was just terrible to watch because he literally that Joe Exotic just made it all about him I got a confession though I really liked his recorded music but I didn't realise it wasn't him singing it. It's not him else singing, no, it's someone else singing. I should be like, oh, these actually sound all right, these songs, man. They do sound all right. The, yeah, videos, are, like, the videos are so bad, though. They're like 90s graphics. The videos are terrible. But there's another bit that was proper scummy when he um, when he burnt down an alligator sanctuary. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where all of the fucking footage from the original documentary was, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, they were making, that's it. They were making the documentary and then he didn't want it to be done anymore because he thought he was getting scammed or whatnot. Yeah. Moving on. Remember when Kim Jong-un was apparently dead? Oh, yeah, yeah. Was that actually a stunt, no? Was was he trying to make the world think he was dead or...? Uh, well, this is it, because they have no reason to think... He, he has no reason to make people believe that he's dead, because apparently all them dictators and them leaders, like, they have body doubles and shit like that. You know a lot of these dictators are, like, they're really paranoid? So maybe, just maybe, he thought, you know what, I'm going to pretend I'm dead. And I'm going to see who's in my circle that's going to try and take over my leadership. He's going to see how people operate and then... And get rid of the pretenders. Yeah. His, his sister, apparently, is the next in line to take over of the country. I've watched quite a few documentaries. I always wanted to see that one with Dennis Rodman when he goes there with his basketball team, with, with a, a team of made-ups. I'm not sure if they're big stars, but Dennis Rodman's friends with him, isn't it? Like, with King jong Un. You know what? Just just because you mentioned Dennis Rodman, I want to talk about the Last Dance um, documentary and him having sex with Karma Electra in the middle of a basketball court. Can we just clap? <laughs> <laughs> Can we just clap for that. Yeah, man. That's that is- fucking amazing, man. <laughs> what, in the basketball court, he had that. He done that. Yeah, yeah. She came out and said it as well. He didn't even say it. She came out and, and said it. Oh, we'll come back to the Last Dance in a second. We just and this was in the nineties when she was fine. We just crack up, we crack up with, well, I mean, yeah. there's not really much to talk about with North Korea. Is there any other country that have as many army parades as they do? I think it's with any dictatorship like that, isn't it? It's all about why you being a dick around, why you're yeah. this guy. Bravo, Remember, though. was it fucking, um, was it us in Holland? No, not Holland, in Finland. Finland, and they had the army parade. Oh, and they had the army parade, yeah. yeah. yeah we were dope. sitting in that fucking restaurant, weren't we? Just that watching it out the restaurant. window. We were just watching out the window, just watching all these tanks just rolling through the fucking streets and that, like. That's a mad one, actually, I've got I've got to actually yeah, man. find out what that was. I can't remember what they were saying that it was. I'm not sure if it was Independence Day thing, but it was, I don't think it was Independence Day. It was, it was definitely no, like some that. Armed Forces Day. But massive shout out to Albert, Sammy and Essa, because I think they came out to eat with us at the time. Helsinki just felt like I was in an MTV fucking movie. Like Everyone was like super beautiful and it's just... 
Oh, when we were sitting on the plane and the plane fucking went whoa on the way back. Oh, that gave me yeah. fucking PTSD, that did. <laughs> was, I'm not even joking, right? Yeah, mate, that was powerful, wasn't it? Bruv, I'm not even joking. That whole entire flight on the way home, yeah, because it was us three, wasn't it? Sitting yeah. in the same row of three. And when it happened, all three of us looked at each other with proper terror in our eyes at what the plane had just done, yeah? Everyone in that plane went, ooh! <laughs> I remember the dude, the guy who's like, uh, uh, sorry about that, guys. Uh, there was um, a plane in front of us and it was in a, its jet stream. And yeah. um, we just uh, we feel a bit of turbulence. And then that was it. He didn't say anything. He just fucking locked off the thing. Like, that wasn't turbulence, man. That was like... Banked hard left and then banked hard right and then banked hard left again. And we're like, what the fuck is this cunt doing? Horrible. You know, when you're driving your car and like there's something in the road that you didn't see, you swerve. Whoa, yeah. To, to, to like dodge it. That's what the plane done. That's, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Have you ever had the air, po- the air pocket drop in a plane? I've, I've heard about this. Is that when it I've just drops? for five seconds and I thought, it just drops, like, it's like a roller coaster, mate. Yeah. The plane drops and you're kind of in, in midair. Do you know what I mean? And everything's yeah. all cut. And yeah. everyone just shit them. Was, oh my god! My mate had that on the way back from Cuba a couple of about ten years ago. He goes, "It's the worst flight he's ever had." Oh. Yeah, was, there was there was a geezer on the drunk dude and the plane just singing. He wants a one ninety nine er. Just singing that the whole <laughs> fucking way over. <laughs> and the plane just dropping out of the fucking sky from Cuba. Like it's just like worst flight ever. Mental. I did. I did have one of them. Like I, I was uh, flying to Paris. Yeah. And it's a really short flight anyway, but we got up into the air and we barely fucking reached cruising height. And then suddenly we just went, boom, like just dropped. And we dropped hard and it was for a, it was a long period of time, it felt like. So like me and my mate, we're both looking at each other like, what the fuck? <laughs> and it stopped and like, you know, you, you stop shitting yourself quite so much. And then the, geezer, the, the pilot comes on and goes, we've just started our descent into Paris Charles de Gaulle airport I was like the fucking could have warned us about that before you started doing that <laughs> do you know what uh, whenever I whenever that happens to me I always look at the air stewardess they look like they're shitting themselves then I'm like I'm not right <laughs> and, I, and I try and keep a poker face as well like I'm not bothered but really I'm shitting myself anyway let's try and keep it cheery anyone flying <laughs> so far, anyone plane who's, crashes, anyone, car anyone crashes. who's flying we wish you a safe journey you know? <laughs> <laughs> there's no flying at the moment don't worry quick, quick, quickly on that what's your favourite airline I'm going to say Virgin Atlantic was amazing yeah I was I would say that as well it used to be British Airways British Airways has gone downhill a little bit I, I, like, think. Ryan, I like Ryan Air <laughs> <laughs> so for real though, I like Ryan Air. It's cheap and cheap and cheerful. No, I'm saying what's your nicest though, like that you've been on. Oh, know, in that not, sense. Not, probably British Airways. The ones I really want to go on though is Emirates and Singapore. Yeah, yeah I heard I'm Emirates is ones. legit, man. Heard Emirates Airways. Well, have either of you ever been on a helicopter? No, of nah. course I have. No. I don't want to do that. I've been close to a helicopter. There was a helicopter in my primary school when we was kids. But uh, we weren't allowed to go on it because was it a police helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, well, you know what? Where we went to school, we fucking might as well have been. No, I think it was an army helicopter, but we weren't allowed to go on it. Just the nerds who were in fucking air cadets. I nearly one time got in a fucking propeller small plane from um Rikers Island. <laughs> Rikers Island. So I ain't never been prison. I'm a good yeah. one. I've, I've been prison in Ghana. No, I'm not. I'm joking. I've never been prison. I went I on one actually. I went on a propeller plane from um, from fucking London City to Nantes in France when I went to Hillfest one time. To Nantes in France. <laughs> Nantes. 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 Yeah, it was uh, J- Jimmy Jimmy Savile was headlining. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, Gary Glitter was a uh, oh, yeah. this. Gary Glitter was on the second stage. Ralph Harris was doing his wobble board Led Zeppelin cover. <laughs> Wait, if anyone's got any plane questions, they should just hit up Jake Marlow because he's the one who's a train for uh, a propeller, a um, airplane nonce. I like planes as well, man. On YouTube, you've got all these like videos of the cabin, like the pilots set fucking little GoPros up around their cabin. That'd be cool, actually. There's this one place in Nepal, I think it is. There's no like automatic landing, so the pilot has to like literally fucking guide a jet plane through the mountains like if there's clouds they've got to abort it because they're on cloud level when they're landing like they have to be like specially trained pilots just to land there there are some mad airport landings I think I'm not sure Madeira is, has got an airport uh, I think they've just got one airport there on the island um, I think their their landing is a bit is a bit sketchy as well man Gibraltar's cool man literally as you're coming into land it looks like you're just about to crash into the sea 
like you can see the fucking individual little waves and then suddenly the runway appears just as you like touch down. That's wild. Do you know what? I remember my first time going to Africa and then we flew to Tanzania and we got a little jet from Tanzania to a, to a place called Mwanza. This airport was like my shed. I was only young. I was like, this can't be the airport, man. Because I'm used to seeing Gatwick, Heathrow, and this was like a shed. With <laughs> Check out the new podcast from Essex, Then and Now, featuring interviews with the Deaf Skulls, Point Down, Understand, and Special Move, with much, much more to follow. Check out their Facebook page to find out more. There was another series that was on Netflix this year called um, The Last Dance. Yeah. Don't. So for whoever isn't familiar with it, The Last Dance is basically about um Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls when he was at the um at the at the club. The series just basically charts from his his um his college years at the beginning when he was at um to Chicago Bulls when he got um the roster, when he got rostered into the into the club on the draft, sorry I should say. Then he joined the roster. And then it's just basically showing all the years of like failure or not winning anything, but getting close. And then all of a sudden, the, the midnight, the early 90s, they won three. Then had a period where he fucking quit and became a baseball player. That's that's kind of fucked up, isn't I didn't it? Not know that you up. know that he became a baseball player. Yeah, like I always I didn't know properly. I always thought it was just like a like he just done it as a like a little bit of a laugh. But yeah, he became a baseball player for like I think two seasons, a season or two seasons, he left to become a baseball player. I think that he played down south, but then he went back and then 96, 97, 98, he won the NBA titles. And I don't think it's ever been done before. A free peat that's what they call it. Three in a row, then three in a row. And you think that pair of um, that documentary with, with Dennis Rodman, that's when he was, used to kind of be like a bit of a cross-dresser. And you think about that was in the 90s when like, you didn't do that shit. Do you know what I mean? You would get a lot of stick. He was just a guy, yeah, who just didn't give a fuck and he'd yeah. just be having a laugh at that because there was one season where Dennis Rodman was playing a little bit shit and he said to the team, he said to the manager at the time, he was like, manager, like, I just need a, I just need a bit of a break. Like, I just need, I need, to have, I need to let my hair down, just have a bit of fun, then I'll come back and I'll, like, do the business. So I was like, all right, cool, you've got 48 hours. So he went to Las Vegas and he's sitting with Carmen Electra and all these fucking stars. He's fucking smoking cigars. He's just living like a fucking rock star. Like he's on fucking motorbike. Yeah. He got picked up at the, air, at the airport and I've come to the jet and there's a motorbike there for him. He jumps on. He was like a fucking, he was literally living like a fucking 80s hair metal fucking dude. Just living that fucking life. He wasn't back after 48 hours, so they had to go and get him. Yeah, <laughs> they had to drag they had him out of the club. Yeah, they had to go and get him. Like, and, he, he, and he let the team down and shit and he said he was sorry. But then he came back and he started, he played fucking well. Imagine having a talent that is, that is wired into the thing that will, that will cause you self-destruction as well. Well, this is it, man, because they do say most people who are geniuses are also mad as well. Maradona, he's a per perfect example, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just his personality, but that personality came out on the football pitch. If he was to take away the crazy side off the pitch, I don't think he'd be able to do it on the pitch, if you get what I'm trying to say. A lot of these men come from, grew up in working class, fucking poor backgrounds and shit. Like, like look at Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, that geezer shouldn't be alive, man. Who did it better? Ozzy Osbourne biting the backs off or Freddie Hamster. Freddie Hamster? Freddie Star beating. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie Hamster. Freddie Hamster. What the Freddie Hamster. It sounds like an old Eastern gangster, doesn't he? Freddie, yeah. Oh, Freddie Hamster. You don't want to fuck with Freddie Hamster, mate. He'll fuck you up, mate. You know Freddie about Freddie Hamster. Hamster? Do you know why they call him Freddie the Hamster? <laughs> no, Freddie Star. But I think that story was made up, innit? Freddie yeah. Star. Yeah. I never Hamster. heard the story, to be fair. Yeah, it, was like, it was one of them daily sport things, I think. Tabloid like, story, like, yeah. Do you know what? Page three, when I think about page three now, it sounds kind of mad. It is, isn't it? But I, I remember, like, taking my car into some random garage back in the day and just seeing loads of top three pictures all over the wall in the way where, you, where you'd be waiting for your car to be fixed. So, like, kids and women would be seeing that stuff. It was just normal back then, do you know what I mean? You're talking about fucking um, sex and how sex sells and that. One of the biggest songs of the year was um, Cardi B and Megan Thee, Stan Megan Thee Stallion. WAP, also known as Wireless Application Protocol. <laughs> <laughs>
Do you know what? I should do that like <laughs> proper voiceover, like wireless application protocol. Is that what it was called? Was that the name for internet? WAP. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, back in the day when you had Nokia, uh, Nokia thirty two ten. That That's was WAP. Oh shit! Or alternatively, it is known as wet ass pussy. But uh, we'll t- we'll go with the one that you went with, Steve. But do you do you remember that dude? Uh, there's a right wing commentator in America called Ben Shapiro. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the dude. He speaks really fast and sounds really squeaky. He decided to. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but he decided to read out the fucking lyrics on his uh, on his on his radio sh- on his his talk show that's on YouTube. And uh, he became basically an internet meme because it was like his voice just reading the lyrics to this. He kept the same. He kept the same wet ass p word. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> See, one thing I will say about right wingers, yeah, they hate celebrity culture, but they need celebrity culture to be able to sell their fucking shows and shit and be outraged over what somebody's doing. You know what I'm saying? Celebrities are all snowflakes unless they agree with us and then they're like good American people. Or they're good conservative people or they're all about family values or, or some shit. Like anyone who says family values and shit like that is doing some fucking depraved fucking shit like 100 percent like look it's another thing we talked about real quick that's that's happened this year there was a hungarian fucking um politician who is um one of victor orban's fucking victor orban is a, the prime minister or the president i don't know which one it, of, of but he's a leader of fucking hungary he's got some dude in his fucking party who is like some anti-gay fucking politician that like rallies against homosexuals like super super bad but just recently, he was caught in a 15-man orgy in fucking Brussels. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Heard bro. This. During lockdown, during coronavirus, all this shit where you can't have more than fucking how many of the people it is in a fucking place at a certain time in like a club. Well, they wear masks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> always find it suspect anyway, man, when someone's that against something like that. Because you've got your casual people who are casually like, oh, I don't like guys. And then when you say why, and they just go, oh, well, wow, they just, oh, it's just in your face, isn't it's it? Not oh, Adam, it's not, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not Adam and Steve. It's Adam and Eve. Like that's the yeah, fucking yeah. latest one of them. That's, <laughs> like if you wanted, the, if you wanted the fucking like a bog standard response to why you're against fucking Adam and Steve, you'd be like, it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. <laughs> but, but then, the, the ones who are fucking like the evangelical Christians and the like that geezer are like proper, like actively anti-gay and stuff like that almost all the time it's because they're fucking feeling guilty about wanting to have sex with other men apparently trying to escape out the window like where you going bro like where you fucking going like? <laughs> from London's very own Ironed Out comes the brand new album We Move As One featuring Pavement Strong Pagans Crazy Old World and a re-recorded version of ACAB We Move As One is a 12 track dose of reality straight from the big smoke down for Life magazine calls it some of the most interesting and exciting music in hardcore right now. Pick up your copy on CD or crystal clear vinyl from the Ironed Out Big Cartel, from gsrmusic.com or from ruction.com. So um, we're probably coming to the end of the thing, of the, of the podcast. It's been a mental year. I just want to make one more, touch upon one more thing, a really sad story something that made me think about like how precious life is and how like one minute you've got a job and the next minute you don't and people fall in hard times. But um, yeah, Gunnosaurus Rex got um, sacked by Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure if anyone's familiar. If you're not in the football, if you know who Gunnosaurus is, but there's basically, there's fucking dinosaur. There's a geezer dressed up in a dinosaur costume. And I always used to be, when we was young, I used to be like, why the fuck is Arsenal's fucking mascot a dinosaur? Like, <laughs> it's, it's like it, it looks like some American team. I'd be like, oh, yeah, I kind of get it. Like, it's, it's kind of wacky. American sports like fucking different animals. I mean, West Ham used to have one fucking. Um, they used to have a bear called Bubbles, and then they used to have this fucking robot looking thing that was a fucking eye, like a hammer. Harry, Harry the Hammer or some fucking. It, it, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. it looks fucking weird as fuck. You know what the best one is that I always liked is the Peterborough one. You've seen it? It's basically ah. a geezer. Like, because you know their nickname is Posh. Posh, yeah. Basically, the, geez, the the mascot is a geezer dressed in a fucking suit with coattails and a top hat and fucking monocle and all that kind of shit. It's just, <laughs> that's just their, their mascot. 
<laughs> so basically, obviously, because of coronavirus and um, clubs are cutting back on their backroom staff and stuff like that, and people who work, because what a lot of people don't think, remember, like when it's when you're watching football, you're going to the fucking game. There's a lot of people who are like working the jobs, doing catering, doing security, doing different jobs and that. So obviously, where's no game, there's nothing going on. People sadly are, are losing their jobs because of this. Like, I mean, considering the, what, what the wages these players get, but I'm not trying to equate oh the players get this much the staff should be getting this much it's just one of those things it's the business model isn't it like it's, it's, it's how it is but uh, it turned out that Gunnosaurus was a surplus to requirements at the Arsenal and it caused a little bit of a stink and apparently Mesut Ozil said that he was going to pay fucking Gunnosaurus's fucking wages if they fucking reinstated him like I mean it's not as if Ozil's doing anything at the moment because he isn't really playing much and he's still getting paid his fucking whack so I'm sure he could sort that fucking Gunnosaurus a fucking wage every week. What's your take on it, Wemmer, as you are an Arsenal fan? How, how did you how did you deal with the news when you found out that Gunnosaurus was uh, leaving the club? It's becoming extinct. <laughs> I was really upset. <laughs> I was, um, what do you say? How did you feel about the feel about the news when Gunnosaurus became extinct to Arsenal? I know I was uh, really upset, you know, I was um, crying and um, I had to, con- you know, I had to console myself with alcohol. <laughs> no, but on, on a real, like, I love Arsenal, but they've been a joke of a club for a while now, so it didn't surprise me. The Ozil thing is just Ozil trying to make Arsenal look bad more yeah. than him trying to help Gunnosaurus. For those that don't know, there's a bit of a... Ozil is currently not in the team, um, and there's a bit of a beef going on between him and the board. It's been going on for a while, hasn't it? The only thing is with, with Arsenal, though, I still don't think they should be thinking about getting rid of the manager because I think he's just inherited a terrible fucking situation and I actually think he do a job, you know. Before we leave, I just I was just quickly looking on Google. I, w- I wanted to see that we haven't missed anything. There's a few things, just a quick response is all I need, really. Uh, Geesh Lane Maxwell being arrested. Any thoughts? Um, hopefully, hopefully she fucking spills the beans on all the people who used to go to go to the island and shit and anyone who was caught up any of the victims who were caught up in that get justice but who knows what's going to happen but yeah she she needs to speak man okay um, Beirut the, the explosion in Beirut oh Beirut oh shit yeah. Lebanon yeah fuck yeah. me that was mental that was mental man so I, I mean again I don't know all the facts, but apparently they were storing shit in this harbour that should not have been stored there. If anything, if you're going to store anything like that, you store it in the desert, in the place where there's nothing around. But they were storing it like at a harbour where all your shit comes in. Comes Is it uh, ammonia, was it, or something? Yeah, man. It yeah. was just, it was crazy, man. Like, I hope people are starting to get their lives and that back together but there's it's, it's no easy fucking fix in it like when shit just rips through your fucking whole your neighbourhood and, and all your fucking infrastructure and that so yeah that was pretty crazy man uh, Eddie Van ha- Eddie Van Halen passing uh, yeah Chadwick passed away um, Kobe passed away yeah man that was that was, um, that was the Kobe one was mad because I remember do you know oh shit do you know when we found out about Kobe yeah, we was at the Wisdom and Chains show. Yeah, it was at the yeah. game Wisdom and Chains played. And I think I said to you, I actually went to you, bro, Kobe Bryant's dead. And you was like, what? what are you talking about? And I showed you. And you was like, what? Yeah, was bu- yeah that, was, that was pretty bad, man. Like, with his daughter as well. I mean, yeah. do you know what? There was some beef as well. Because I was, see, this is what I hate about when somebody dies, yeah. In this world, nobody is perfect. Everyone has done or said something in the past that you might not agree with or that they, they might have fucked up. If unless it's something really super, super bad, like Ian Watkins sort of type fucking shit, then like, then yeah, fuck that fucking guy. You know what I mean? As soon as they die, there's someone itching to post and like, oh yes, fuck this person. Like, he done this, he done that. It's like, fucking hell. Like, the game ain't even buried yet or the woman ain't even been buried yet and you're finding bad shit to say about them. So it always makes me think, when we eventually fucking go and we pass, is there going to be someone who's going to be like, oh yeah, fuck Lewis, he's done this line, I'm fucking, he's dead now. It's- yes, I will. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be up for it if you oh, want. Oh, cheers, Steve. <laughs> <you're> not, <laughs> <laughs> Celebrity deaths don't normally affect me that much because, you know, I don't know him, but Eddie Van Halen, that, that like got to me a little bit. I was quite gutted by that one. Yes. He's like a proper guitar hero, but let's not forget as well, in the whole cool community, we've lost a fair few of our own as well. Yeah, we have, like. Let's end it on a positive. 
2021's coming. The vaccine's coming. Yeah. And apparently we have a Brexit deal. Oh, we had a Brexit deal this time last fucking year. Let's see what happens. Let's see what the governments of the EU and our government do. But um, I'm not hopeful. But at the same time, it's you never know. But I'm sure we, we'll definitely be back out there in some capacity. But just not in the way how we believe it should be done. But yeah. Anyway, I, I just want to end by thanking everyone that tunes into the podcast. Everyone that's been checking out our episodes throughout the year. For me personally, I want to wish everyone a happy Christmas and a amazing new year. And I know a lot of people are not going to be able to see their family, but this 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 thing we're going through, it will pass and we can all hopefully move on with our life. That's it. That's it. That's so, uh, yeah, I'll just, whatever Wemma just said, I'll briefly touch upon that. I just wish everyone the very best during Christmas, no matter what background you're from, your race, your religion, whatever. If you are religious, keep the faith. If you're not religious, then have hope and we see we can all meet up and see each other in 2021, whether that be in shows, whether that be in outside of shows. And hopefully everyone is able to keep and have their economic standards OK, not losing jobs, etc. And their health is the most important thing as well. So I wish everyone the best. And um, if you're going to drink, drink responsibly. If you're going to take drugs, don't go overboard. Just have a nice, safe time. Very I also, I want to say for all of the people out there that are uh, sitting at home on their own over Christmas, it's perfectly acceptable for the next two weeks to be drinking at home on your own. <laughs> Damn straight. I'll give you that pass. <laughs> Damn straight, mate. I've already, I've already started. I'm, I'm, I'm not on my own, but I've already started drinking. I've fucking had a pint of fucking loony juice from the local brewery. So, yeah, man, you're right, Steve. If you're on your own... It's perfectly fine to do really? that. It's Just acceptably, don't. it's acceptable socially now for the next few weeks to get hammered on your own, in the words of Michael from Adam Partridge. And if you uh, piss your knickers or piss your pants, make sure to change them. But, but everyone, keep having showers in the morning, yeah? Just because you're fucking on your own don't mean you can't shower, you dirty bastard. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to sign out. A- <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, everyone. You're listening to the Everyone But Us podcast, straight from the heart of London.